Men of Galilee, why gaze and wonder at the heavens? This Jesus, whom you saw ascending into heaven, will return as you saw him go. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's a great joy to celebrate Mass with you today as we celebrate the Feast of the Lord's Ascension into Heaven, where He reveals to us where we're all destined to go. The body must go where the head follow, where the head leads us. And so we come to God with that desire for heaven, acknowledging our need for His grace and His help to guide us along that way. We take a moment to call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, whom had been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. 
God, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Go teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. And as he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage, and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Kids have kind of a natural way of um, pushing the boundaries to figure out where their limits are, right? I think it's kind of like our natural growing up disposition. They see how far they can go to figure out where the hard boundary is for their behavior. And as, as they're growing up, they keep asking questions, trying to figure out why. And um, as, as in that process, at least thinking back in my experience, there's four words that um, kind of brought an into that. It would usually kind of fill me with this sense of disappointment, right? So usually follow it. I'm trying to do something that I probably wasn't supposed to be doing. My parents didn't want me to do it. And I'd inevitably be asked, why can't I? And I'd keep asking why. And then those four words would come. Because I said so. And I'd hear those four words. And it's like the most unsatisfying feeling in the world. Like, 
I found the limit, I found the boundary, but I was really disappointed in it and I was empty. Um, and I didn't like this new boundary that I had just discovered without really kind of understanding the reason why, because I said so, it just didn't seem satisfying to me. And as we celebrate the solemnity of the ascension today, so I was sitting with, with the readings and with this mystery, I kind of found myself wrestling with this reality that I imagined the apostles were also wrestling with. Like, why did he have to go? Why did, why did he have to leave? Why couldn't he just stay and keep doing all these great things? Why did he have to leave in order to send the Spirit? Why couldn't he give us the Holy Spirit while also remaining with us? Like, imagine all the great things that would be happening if Jesus were still here, walking this earth, doing miracles, preaching. Like, imagine, I'd, I like to think, what, 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 would our, what our world would be like if he were still here. Similar questions arise. Take a quick look at the headlines, um, especially now. Um, can bring up those kinds of questions, like the Holy Spirit doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Why isn't the Lord doing anything? Why do all these difficult, painful tragedies continue to happen? I feel like our, our life as of late has been like we're just moving from tragedy to tragedy to tragedy without anything getting better, without anything getting worse. It feels like Jesus has actually gone and hasn't really done anything ask like, okay, where is this redemption that he supposedly won for us? Because I don't really see a whole lot of evidence for it in the world today. First reading, right before Jesus leaves, the apostles voice a similar desire to Jesus, I think, in that question they ask him. They ask, are you going to at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What they're asking is, are you going to finally take this mess that we've been living in for centuries and Turn it over and, and redeem it, right? Are you going to take this Roman oppression and get it out of here? Are you going to make us free again? Are you going to make us free of all this enslavement? Are you going to come in power and might and finally do this restoration thing that we've been waiting for this whole time that never seems to be happening? Are you finally going to do it now, right before you leave? Jesus answers, perhaps in the least satisfying way that he possibly can. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established. Feels an awful lot like, because I said so. I imagine what's going on in the hearts of the apostles as Jesus answers in that way. Kind of like that feeling of emptiness, disappointment, like, is that really it? Like, you, like it's not for me to know? That's, that's your answer to that question? As we go through our lives, I think we all ask similar questions to God, right? We encounter real suffering, real pain. People who we know and love go through real tragedies, real hardships, real difficulties. And these questions arise in our hearts like, Lord, why is all this happening? How are you going to bring good out of all this, right? Are you going to redeem this situation? When are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? We, these questions just naturally arise. We're trying to grasp for some kind of control, some kind of understanding, these questions aren't that different from the question the apostles asked Jesus in the first reading. Like we're trying to understand and to know what God is doing. We want to be at peace because I see the action of God in my life. And suffering evokes this quest these questions of understanding and trying to understand why. Yet especially in the moment, it's rare that we get a satisfying answer to any of those questions. And it makes us really feel helpless and powerless, unsatisfied, angry, confused, maybe even hopeless because I'm never, I, I can't get an answer. Jesus doesn't seem to answer those questions when I bring it to him, just like he didn't seem to answer the question when the apostles asked him. And in that moment, that moment of helplessness, of emptiness, of wondering, of difficulty, of powerlessness, we have a choice to make. In preparation for this ascension, in preparation for his leaving, Jesus continually told his, his, his apostles all these many important things. He prepared them saying like, yes, I'm going to leave you, but it's actually good. I'm not going to abandon you. The spirit is going to come. Multiple times he assured them, like, you don't have to fear. I have overcome the world. Like the battle is over. The victory is won. Things would be difficult. In that moment, when I'm finally at that spot that Jesus was preparing me for, I have a choice to make. Do I believe the words that he said? Do I believe that he is God? And do I trust in him, in his words, in his power? That's a hard question to answer and a hard choice to make to choose to trust. He told us things would be difficult and there's no reason to fear. And he said, I'm telling you all these things so that when they happen, you may believe. 
He knew we would come to this moment. And I'm telling you all these things so that when, you, when it happens, when you find yourself in that situation, you would remember my words and choose to believe in them. So that when it feels like he's gone, we would know he is here. The advocate is with us. So when we don't have any answers to the questions that we seem to be asking, we could choose trust over despair. In ascending to heaven, I think Jesus reveals to us this image of both where we're headed and where we're called to look. Because those words are true. The victory is ours. Heaven is open to us. The body truly can follow where the head has gone before, like we prayed in the opening prayer for Mass today. That's where our destiny is, up, not down. The new creation, not the old creation. He invites us, look at this hope that I'm holding for you. You will experience this. He promises to us. And so as we're headed there, that's where we fix our gaze. That's where we fix our eyes, on him, not on ourselves. Focus on the trust, not the lack of my own understanding. Jesus was clear, again, that things would continue to be difficult. They would be very hard. We'd be tempted to believe that he has left us, that we have no hope, that we are alone. He says, don't be surprised. We all are going to experience that. But he has truly risen, conquered, overcome, and ascended above it all. And so in confidence and in trust, he invites us as we look up at the ascension to fix our gaze there, to fix our trust and our hope there. In the one thing, the one place, in the one person who truly never wavers, never falters, always endures and triumphs over the deepest darkness and the deepest suffering. Today, anew, we place our hope in him. Together now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence, we come now before our Heavenly Father and make known to Him all of our needs and intentions. For all the members of the Church, may the Holy Spirit inspire us as authentic living witnesses to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and all who are in positions of authority, may God empower them to speak the truth in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing difficulties in their lives, may the peace of Christ that is beyond all understanding bring them comfort and resolution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the homebound, and all who join us in praying this Mass, May God grant them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace in heaven. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our personal intentions we offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way today for all those who lost their lives in the tragic school shooting in Texas this past week, that those who have lost their lives would be received into God's kingdom in heaven, and that Jesus would bring hope, peace, and comfort to all those who suffer and all those who mourn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come to you as our one hope, our one source of peace. We pray that in your goodness, you would hear all these prayers of our heart that we bring to you, and that you would answer them all according to your holy will for us. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. 
For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins the of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Word of gratitude for your continued faith. It's a great joy to just be able to continue to celebrate these Masses. For those who aren't able to come to church for whatever reason, be assured of our continued prayers for you. Um, it's God, we pray that God will continue to bring you great healing and great comfort as we journey together to our homeland in heaven. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.